Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can speed up your processes that require a lot of API calls in Python. So to speed up the process, I'll be using AIO HTTP along with the standard async features of Python. But first I wanna show you what it looks like when you don't use any of the async features. So if you look down here, I have the results of my script here, which basically just takes a YouTube channel ID, finds the playlist ID for that channel's videos, and then for each video on that channel, it gets the number of views, puts them all into a list, and then calculates the average. So you can see here, for my channel, I have 422 videos, and the average view count is 19,737. And this entire process took 95 seconds. So let's walk through the process here. So first, in addition to importing a request to perform the request and time to measure how long it takes. I'm getting the API key for the YouTube API. So I'm just importing that so you don't use my API key. Then I'm starting the timer and I'm putting in my channel ID for my YouTube channel. So you can take any channel ID for any YouTube channel that you want. But in my particular case, I'm taking mine. And then I'm performing a request to YouTube's channels endpoint to get the playlist ID for my channel's videos. Then once I have that playlist ID, I can go ahead and get the list of video IDs. And what I'm doing here is I just create an empty list. I'm looping continuously because for each endpoint, there's a possible next page token result that will allow me to get the next page. So YouTube returns about 50 results at a time, I believe at maximum. And if there are more than 50 results, then it will give you a page token. So that's just what I'm doing here. Then I'm taking all the video IDs and appending them. And then uh, I'm just checking to see if there's a next page token. And if there is, I repeat the process. If there isn't, I just break out of the loop. Then once I have all the videos, I do one final loop for each video. So I have 422 videos. So I'm performing this request here 422 times. I'm getting the number of views per video. I'm appending it to that list. And then here, I'm finally doing the calculation. So all this, this simple code takes 95 seconds, which is really slow. And if I had a bigger channel with more videos, it would take even longer. So by changing this to async, we'll see how much time can be saved uh, with this. So just one thing to note that async is something that you use when you can do a lot of things in parallel, meaning they don't depend on each other. So if you've noticed, I have three different types of requests here. The first one is getting the channel information, so the playlist ID from the channel. And then the second one is taking that playlist ID and getting the list of videos. And then the final one is just getting the views per video. So if you think about it, the first request for the channels has to happen before the second request for the playlist. I can't start the playlist request until I know what the playlist ID is from the channel. So the second request depends on the first. So I can't do anything with async here because I can't run them at the same time. But once I have all the videos, I have the video IDs, then each request becomes independent because no one video ID request depends on another. So that's where I can use async and that's where I'll, I'll modify this code to make it run significantly faster. So this third loop is the one I'm going to modify. I'm not going to touch the code above because I can't do anything about that in terms of making it faster through async. So the first thing I need to do to get this to work is I need to create a function that I'm going to uh, run in the event loop. So the event loop is what's going to handle the uh, running of everything in parallel. So I'm going to create a function and what I'll do is I'll comment this out and there and I'll start a new function, right? So uh, I'll call this async and actually I'll put this underneath the print statement. So I'm gonna run it above this print statement but I'll define it down here. So async def, so this is how you define a function that will be run asynchronously and main, right? And inside of here is where I want to do something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the library AIO HTTP. So let me just import that. So a IO HTTP and I also need to import async IO from Python. So this library is not 
in the Python standard library, so you have to install it first. Async IO is, so it's there by default. And now what I want to do is I want to prepare to start sending all these requests. So the first thing I need to do is create an AIO HTTP session to handle these requests that I'm going to send. So what I can do is I can use async with. So this is what you use when you're using uh, an async function uh, in a with statement. So async with, and it's going to be AIO HTTP dot client session, capital S as session. And then what I want to do in here is I'm going to create some tasks and the tasks are going to represent each individual request that I want to send, right? So I have 422 videos, so I'm going to create 422 tasks. And the easiest way to do this is just to loop. So what I'll do is I'll create an empty list called tasks and there are multiple ways you can handle this part, but I think this is the most clear for a video like this, but I can say four, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop over the list of video IDs that I have. So if I go to video IDs, which I'm filling in here, this loop, I can say for video ID in video IDs. And then what I want to do is I want to uh, add a task using that video ID and sending a request. So I need to create a second function, which I'll do in a moment, but I can start at the beginning of the code here. And I'm going to call async io that ensure future. And I'm going to call a function and another async function that will perform the request. And it's going to take in two things. It's going to take in the video ID and the session. So I'll call this uh, get video data and I'll pass in the session and I'll pass in the video ID. And I'll define this in just a moment and I'll make this a task and I'll do task.append and then task. So what's happening here is every time I call ensure future, I'm basically telling it to get this process started. Remember, I haven't created this function yet, but I'm telling it to get this function started and then move on immediately, right? So it creates this function, it appends it, and then it moves on, right? So I'll have a bunch of these being called in parallel when I do this. It's not going to wait on the result like it does in the old example. Here, I make a request and then I have to wait for the results to get back. Whereas here, I just send the request without waiting for the results to get back. And I append it to these this tasks list and then I'll do something with that list later. So before I come back here, let me create this function. So this is going to be another function. I'll call it get video data. And it takes in a session and a video ID. And then what I want to do here is I want to take the URL and build it. So I'll take the URL from here and I'll paste it there. So I'm going to take the video ID and create a URL. And then I can use async with again. So async with, and then I can take the session, which comes from here. And the reason why I'm passing the session to this function is because I only need one session to perform the request. I don't need to create one for every single video that I have. So that's why I pass it to this get video data function. So async with session dot get URL. And then I can say as response, right? So it's going to send this request and it's going to await it, meaning it's not going to sit there and wait for it to return. Instead, it's going to allow other things to execute at the same time, and it's only going to come back to this code when it's done. Once it comes back, I can get the response. So I can do response.json, and then I can also await this, but this will be pretty fast converting the response to JSON. And I can say something like uh, results data. And then once I have this result data, I can get the actual data from the API. So this will be similar to what I have up here. So I have items and then I can get the view count. So let me just copy all this and paste it here. It's slightly different, so I'll modify it. So instead of r.json, I already have the response converted to JSON. So I'll take result data and just put it here. And then I can get the uh, view count. And I don't need to append it to anything. I'm just going to return the view count because this stands alone now. So this will only be executed for one 
video ID at a time. So I'm getting the video ID and I'm returning the view count for that particular video ID. And before I forget, I should make this an integer so it runs. Okay, so now that I have this get video data function done, I can come back here. And what I want to do is I want to call async IO again, dot gather. So what dot gather will do is it will take a list of tasks. So I'm passing in the task here and I'm just using the star. So I can pass them like you know, it can be like task one, task two, task three, and so on. That's just what the star is doing. It's taking the list and converting it to a form like that. And what I can do is I can await this and I can assign this to be the view counts. So this view count should be in here because I'm not using it, but view counts down here should be assigned to async.gather, right? Because each task is going to return a view count. And what gather does, it's going to take the result from every single task that I created with Ensure Future. And it's going to put them in this value here, this list. So what ends up happening is after all this is done, I end up with the same list that I had in this previous example. It's just a different way of getting there. But the difference is I don't have to wait for each individual request to finish everything is going to run and then as they come back they're all going to get put into this list so the data will be equivalent but the process to get there is going to be different and then the last thing i want to do is i want to display how long it takes so i'll just copy this with the print statements and i'll put that here okay so now that i have that and actually i can put it outside of the uh, width block what I want to do is I want to run this. So to run something that's async, you have to have an event loop. And the easiest way to create an event loop is to, is to use the async.io.run function. So where's my print statement here? So I'll use async.io.run, and then main is the name of my function. And we'll see how long this takes. So before it took 95 seconds, let's see how long this one takes. Well, it failed already. It says main is not defined and it's not picking up it at the end because I'm running as a script. So I'll put this at the end and now let's run it. So it takes three seconds and we see I still get the same number of videos. I get the average number of views is the same, but it only took three seconds instead of 95 seconds. So this is exactly why you use async. So anytime you have a bunch of requests that can be independent, if you follow this pattern, then you'll be able to save a ton of time over the regular synchronous approach. So just remember everything has to be independent. And then as long as you follow a process like this or something similar to this, uh, you can get the results back way faster and I'm on a slow connection right now so it would be even faster if I wasn't. So that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I'm demonstrating this because I ran into this and uh, something I was making myself so I figured I'd make a video to show you all how to do it. So if you have any questions about this feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you have subscribed to my channel already please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.